Hello everyone, welcome back to The Kitchen Table. Today on The Kitchen Table, we're just gonna be talking about firmware for both the Phantom 2 and the Phantom 3, as there's been a couple of releases. And there's, they're very, they, they seem minor on the surface, but I'm just wondering whether or not there's a bit more to both of them. Uh, but before we go further, we must have a beverage as is tradition on The Kitchen Table when we're discussing our drones. Um, today is a, a, a early in the morning, unusually for me, so I'm on the coffee and um, this is a really, really good Monsoon Malabar from merchantcoffee.co.uk. Uh, I was buying some uh, South American beans and they happened to say, oh, they got some of these in. And uh, so I added them to my basket and it was definitely worth it. So, um, cheers. Mm. That is a very good cup of coffee. Right, um, firmware. Over the past uh, three-ish weeks, two to three weeks, we've had a couple of um, bits of firmware updated. One for the Phantom 2 series, which is now on to firmware 3.14. And a, a brief uh, update uh, the other day to the P3 series up to 1.1.8. Now, both of them on the surface are minor releases with minor little, little things, but um, there's some stuff in the accompanying release notes that I think it's worth talking about. Let's talk about the P3 first of all. So this was to fix a particular bug, apparently, to do with the fact that when you're updating, if you don't have the transmitter switched on, in some cases, there was a, a bit of confusion. So, you know, on the surface, this is a really minor thing just to help some people get their software updated uh, if they had a particular kind of combination of things on and things off. That's all fine. I don't think that's a, you know, that, that's just a little, a little fix on the surface anyway. The thing that struck me is when you look at the release notes for this piece of firmware for the Phantom 3, it says, you must update to 1.1.8, otherwise you will not be able to update to future with future features. Now, that to me says a couple of things. I either, one, this small fix was perhaps a bit more fundamental because that's all it says in the release notes and, you know, surely there would be a few little buggy things you'd want to fix in any kind of software post-release. The other thing is that, um, is this going to be a, a new thing going forward? Is DJI going to insist on saying that unless you're running the latest version of the firmware, you will not be able to add anything uh, in terms of new features that come along in, in subsequent firmware until you've brought yourself up to date? Thank you, Daisy Dog. I hope you didn't hear that in the background. My dog making very strange noises. Um, so my concern about that, I guess, uh, personally, I don't have a concern, but I know that there are some people who like to hold fire with uh, their uh, firmware updates, or let things shake down a little bit, see if there's any issues. And even people sometimes, unless there's a particular real key feature they want, they will skip. They will, they will, they'll, I'm not gonna update now. I'm gonna wait until the next one or the one after or so on. There are still people I know running Phantom 2s on about four or five firmware versions earlier. That looks like potentially you may not be able to do anymore. So if, for example, DJI introduce in firmware a feature that limits something that you at the moment enjoy, it looks like you won't have the choice if you want to keep on you know, with the up-to-date features. You're gonna to have to actually accept that. So I know that some people have concerns over, over that. Um, the other side of the coin is, uh, you know, it, my understanding with the Inspire, for example, is that the Inspire will check whether or not you've got the latest firmware and will give you a couple of flights running old firmware and then will basically turn around and go, I'm not arming my motors until you sort it out. I wonder if we're going to see that with the P3 as well. Um, now, another aspect of this is reflected in the P2 update, which is really minor in the sense that all it does is updates some no-fly zones. Now, there's a couple of things with this. If DJI is going to move forwards with the Inspire and the P3 towards a, uh, a, a check system where the app will not let you fly unless you are running the latest, that means that you, know, you have to accept any no-fly restrictions that DJI put in. And if those are mandated by the territory that you're flying in, if it's the law, then that's fine. 
If it's not, or it's arbitrary, or it covers an area that's not uh, covered by a legislation, then I, have a, I personally have an issue with that. So for example, in the P2 firmware, it adds two no-fly zones around the uh, parliament building in Japan and the Imperial Palace. There's a couple of political uh, kind of centers in Japan have now no-fly zones. Now, uh, there was a recent incident a few months back where somebody tried to fly a drone with a uh, not particularly pleasant payload and you know into or onto the roof of one of these buildings. So I get the need to want to clamp it down. My concern is, are these zones reflecting a legal status? In other words, if it is illegal now to fly a drone in Japan within that area, that's fair enough. I haven't got a problem with that being a no-fly zone built in. Um, and I kind of don't have a problem with it being a sort of a, you know, you're forced to update it going forward. Where I would have a concern is if there is no such law and, uh, you know, uh, DJI has been, shall we say, pressured commercially to do something about it in the meantime. In which case, that to me is not on. Uh, now, if you're in a P2 situation, you don't have to update. If you're flying um, a P3 or an Inspire 1, you might have to to get that. Going forward, in fact, the way that the app works with the Inspire and the P3, I'm, I don't even know whether we're going to move away from physically using uh, firmware updates over SD card and whether or not it will go as a direct feed from the app. I don't know. But that, to me, is always a concern. As you know, on this channel, I promote flying safely, flying responsibly, and flying legally. But, as I've always said, if there's a legal no-fly zone, I have no issues with it being hardwired into the, into the firmware for, for an aircraft, as long as it matches the, 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 the zone exactly, uh, and isn't just an enormous circle stopping loads of people who live on the outside of the circle from flying in the area that it actually is restricted to. So, that was just a, an, an interesting side note that we're having these specific no-fly areas put in. And also with the P3, are we moving towards mandatory firmware? So that was it. And my dog is obviously pining to get out the door. I better leave it there. Uh, more soon. Um, sorry for the bit of the hiatus, but I've been doing some behind the scenes stuff. The channel patrons and welcome to the three new patrons this month. Your support is really appreciated. Channel patrons are aware of what's what's coming up and uh, and we'll we'll find out about all that, that stuff that's been going on in the next couple of weeks. Until then, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you do support the channel by liking and subscribing to the videos, I really appreciate it. And if you would like to support financially, there are details down in the description. Thanks again, we'll see you soon on the kitchen table. Until then, cheers.